Hi, my name is Ben Simmons and in this little video tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create and combine uh, MATCAD materials which are um, materials based on uh, the normals of your materials so they all work quite quickly in real time and just how to create and combine new ones out of old ones that you already have lying around and uh, create some interesting looks for your sculpts that uh, you can look at in uh, real time. So. For this little demonstration, what I've got here is a sculpt I did a little while ago of a sort of four-armed alien creature type thing. And uh, what I've applied here is just um, a mix of a couple of matcap materials. You can see in the uh, the darker areas you've got a little saturated red going on and then uh, it sort of blends into a sort of more browny material. And I've done that by um, using the ambient occlusion map that I've baked as a mask. So what I'll take you through in this tutorial is how to do that, how to uh, just bake an ambient occlusion map for your model and then set up a um, real-time GLSL material in Blender that uh, gives you this sort of look and uh, at the end I'll show you some variations and how you can then sort of bake this look into a new madcap material that you can then use on future stuff. So it's kind of handy and it's a great way of generating new uh, materials to look at your models with. So let's get started. Um, if I just go full screen again and uh, select my model here and for now I'll just hit F on uh, the material to give it a fake user so it's not deleted when I get rid of it. So, jumping back to regular shading mode, what I want to do first is create a ambient occlusion map that I can then use to control how my textures will work. Now, already I've uh, just created a UV layout, and you can see on the left here, I've actually already baked my ambient occlusion map. I'll take you through the stages for doing that though. So, if I just split off the window here by right clicking on the border and create a new properties window in between. I can then go into the bake settings here in the render panel and um, if I just tap, uh, select my mesh, tap into edit mode and then in the UV image editor I'm going to go image, new image and it doesn't need to be huge because it's only there to uh, create sort of blend between two textures. So it can be 1024 by 1024. I'll just call that AO. It doesn't need an alpha channel, so I'll turn that off. And then hit OK. And now I will bake an ambient occlusion map. So in the bake settings here, I just set my bake mode to ambient occlusion, make sure normalize is checked and hit bake and that'll take a little while and uh, there we go if I tab back into uh, object mode you can see that although I've used some fairly low settings here I uh, have got my ambient inclusion map and in fact what I might do is just go into my world settings set my ambient inclusion up properly so if I turn the samples up to maybe 16 and use Adaptive QMC, which usually gives me better results, I'm just going to hit bake on that again. And uh, it might take a little longer this time, but I'll get nice smooth results on my ambient occlusion map. There we go. I've got a lot less noise there. So. Now I can use this map to do all sorts of things with my matcap materials. So I'm going to save that as an image. And then start setting up a material. Now you'll notice on the right here in my blend file that I've got um, a couple of spot lamps, three in fact, uh, providing the lighting for my scene. And uh, these are all just really basic spot lamps, just hit shift A, add lamp spot and uh, the settings on them are all fairly straightforward. All I've done 
is turn the um, buffer size up to 1024, that gives you slightly crisper shadows, or um, better um, alias shadows, uh, and less sort of jaggy edges to them. And set the filter type to Gauss, which generally gives nice soft interpolation between shadowy areas and lit areas. Uh, box doesn't seem to do quite as good a job at that. And I've turned the samples up to 6, just to get uh, better quality results. Uh, they all work apart, pretty much the same apart from that. So I've just got a little three-point lighting setup, one from above here, one from sort of the side and in front, and one from the back, just to light up his back a bit. Now, basically what I want is a setup that gives me real-time results. Now, I'm screen recording, so the frame rate is a little choppy, but I assure you that uh, generally, this displays in real time. Now, what I need to do is make sure my material mode in the display settings here for the 3D viewport is set to GLSL, and that'll let me see how my lights are affecting the material, and uh, I'll see nice shadows and things, and then when I set up my material properly, I'll be able to display my matcap materials. So, Let's go through the process of creating and combining matcap materials. Now, your standard um, material that we're going to set up this way is just going to use one image, and we're going to map that image to the normals of the mesh. So, for now, let's set this material to shadeless, so you can see the effect that a matcap material would have, say, when you're sculpting. If I jump into the textures here, and just add a new one, call it matcap, I've got a few in the blend file already, so I'll call this one matcap7, and set the type to an image, and if I jump into my matcap texture folder, and select one I like the look of, this is what I'm a fan of, uh, you can see if I set that as my image, I get kind of weird looking results, and that's because I haven't changed the mapping coordinates yet to normal, and you can see when I do that, snaps being fairly recognizably a uh, matcap image uh, and uh, affects my material correctly. So that's pretty much all I need to do to set up a basic matcap material and uh, these are really useful for sculpting obviously but uh, also it's kind of a nice way to present your final models really quickly and easily um, and it'll look exactly the same when you render it. If I hit F12 here you'll see that apart from now being obviously uh, anti-aliased and uh, at a higher resolution, it looks exactly the same as it does in 3D viewport, which is really nice. And uh, if I hit only render and hide my uh, lamps and things, you can see it's uh, quite a clean, uh, simple way to display a model in 3D viewport that's a lot more uh, aesthetically pleasing than using um, the standard OpenGL shaders. Uh, but what we can do is then start using Blender's material system to combine different matcap materials and create new ones and uh, this can give us some really interesting results. Uh, so the first thing I'll do is just show you, for example, adding another matcap material and blending between the two. This is an interesting way to create just a new material. So let's call it this matcap 8, uh, set it to image again and open up a different matcap material image. And these are all just JPEGs that I've collected off the internet or painted myself in GIMP or rendered. Sometimes if I just get a nice material that I happen to like, I'll uh, render that on a sphere and I'll be showing you that at the end of this tutorial. Um, so if I just pick another texture here in the next slot down, set it to normal again, and at the moment this kind of completely takes over the previous texture we had but we can now blend between the two by just using the colour slider and this lets us sort of create new materials and we can also change blend the uh, blend mode for this material maybe set it to overlay and see how that affects it and you can see we now have a sort of nice metallic shade on our um, character here so this is a really cool way to just play with matcap materials and recombine them and uh, we can take this further though by starting to include the ambient occlusion map that we baked earlier. 
and uh, to do that we'll be using it as a stencil and uh, I might also use it to uh, affect the uh, colour of the object, basically using it to add some shadows that we can see in real time. So if I shift this first, uh, this second, sorry, matcap material down slot, just using the arrows on the right hand side, I can now add a new texture in between the two that I'm going to call AO Mask. And this is going to be the ambient occlusion map that we baked earlier. So if I set my type to image again, and uh, then select the AO map that I baked earlier, uh, you can see that I need to set my mapping coordinates to UV. So I'll do that. And just select the UV map here. You can see that looks kind of cool already. But uh, for now, what we're going to use is the stencil option to blend between the two materials. So I'm going to turn off it affecting the colour and instead set it to stencil. And in order for this to work with a uh, material with RGB channels, you need to turn on RGB to intensity. And you can see that it now blends between the two materials. So in the areas where the AO map is dark, we get the uh, second, sorry, the original material, and where it's light, we get the new material in that third slot down. So if I set that third slot down back to maybe just mix, we can now get some quite cool effects. Um, and it also almost looks like a sort of cavity shaded or a subsurface scattering effect where those darker areas look different. Now, um, from an aesthetic standpoint, I think what I'd like to do is set the dark areas to be nice and dark red. So I'm gonna dig out a sort of dark red um, matte cap material and set that as my first slot and then the lighter areas the uh, more brightly lit areas I want to be a sort of less saturated colour um, and in general um, this is sort of how the real world works is that, or at least how skin works on a lot of animals um, where it's darker you'll get more saturation because the light that's bouncing around in that area has been scattered through the skin and blood and tissue and things like that. So you generally get more saturated shadows. So if I set this to maybe just a grey colour, coloured uh, material, and you can see this looks like a pretty cool material. Um, and I've set up my material on the staff and his eyes here in a very similar way, just by baking an ambient occlusion map and um, blending between two materials. Now we can also bring that ambient occlusion map back into our original, uh, into this new material that we've created and uh, use it just to add some extra shadows. So I'm going to repeat that AO mask texture in a new slot on the uh, bottom of the stack and set that to UV again and this time set the blend mode to multiply and that adds some nice ambient occlusion shadows to our model that we can then see in real time. So um, this is basically what I wanted to show you, um, but uh, there's one more thing that I can uh, explain, which is that, alright, you've uh, created a nice material for this one character, but what if you want to then use that again in something else? Well, obviously you can just pepper the material onto that uh, new sculpt and bake a new ambient occlusion map, but uh, if you want something simple that works with any material, then what you can do is uh, just render a new map cap material using that uh, blend of map caps that you created. Now this won't capture the ambient occlusion data like the other one will uh, because you're just applying it to a sphere so there is no ambient occlusion baked into that material anymore but nonetheless it's kind of interesting. So here's one I created earlier just with two different map cap materials that I've uh, blended together and I've just mixed them together by about a half each. So uh, on that second slot with colour only affects it by half. And uh, I might briefly play around with uh, what different effects I can get. I think I'll go back to mix. And you can see if I turn off that material, um, or that texture slot rather, I uh, get a, a nice different material from either of the two that I had before really. Um, and so what I've set up in this little second scene 
is just a really basic render setup uh, with a single camera and that's got an orthographic lens and the size is set so that it just clips off the edge of the sphere and that's very important because when I now hit render and uh, render this sphere you can see it extends just a bit beyond the edges and that will stop you getting um, strange aliasing artifacts and um, sort of weirdness in the texture mapping when you use this render as um, a new matcap texture. So that's very important to remember and I can just save that out into my matcap folder. As that. And now I can use that as a new matcap texture whenever I'm uh, working on a sculpt or something like that. Now, uh, one thing I should say is that I've set this material to shadeless, so there's no lights in this scene. It just renders as the colours from the matcap materials. And that's really handy when you're sculpting as well, because it'll, um, it'll display faster than if you're uh, adding shadows or lighting from lights in the scene. So that's just something to keep in mind. Anyway, this has been a, uh, a tutorial on uh, yeah how to create these matcap materials and blend them together and things like that. And uh, I think you can get some really interesting effects from it. Uh, you can see here, there are a few that I've created earlier. So the one I showed you at the beginning of the tutorial, which is sort of, is a blend between a nice reddy color in the dark areas and a brown, but I've also blended uh, together a couple of other options. So this one has some nice lighting, um, adding in some green highlights and orange areas. And that's just from a second map cap uh, texture that I grabbed off the internet and uh, mixed with another one and uh, this third material that I created again using the same process is uh, almost a sort of I don't know avatar like look uh, where I've blended together uh, one blue texture and one pink that I uh, painted myself and uh, I think it creates a sort of really interesting uh, matte cap to show off the model with or um, just get an idea of how you might start texturing it. You could even uh, bake the uh, resulting texture into the uh, textures for starting doing some actual um, color textures for your model. So for example, I could now hit bake, uh, first setting it to textures, and I'd get a bake of, if I set this correctly, I'd get a bake of those colors um, that I can then start as a starting point for uh, some proper textures. Let's set that going. There we go. And you can see that's uh, that would make quite a cool basis for uh, starting on some texture work. Anyway, um, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. It's been pretty quick, um, and I hope it's shown you something fun and interesting. And uh, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. All right, thanks very much.